YouTube, this is Chris, Kerbal Space Program. I just wanted to do a video here, quick video, hopefully I don't spend too much time on this, uh, regarding orbital mechanics. And in KSP, you, you don't really necessarily need to know why or what, because um, the game does a pretty good, with the maneuver nodes and everything, it does a pretty good job of getting you where you need to be. Uh, the learning curve is a little bit tough when you first start out, but uh, you watch a few YouTube videos. Scott Manley is a great YouTubist, especially for KSP. Uh, you can kind of pick some things up like I did. Uh, I just wanted to do a video, however, of uh, basic orbital mechanics. Uh, just like the common terms that people use. And, you know, if you've watched any of the uh, videos or if you've played any of the KSP you, you'll come across terms like apogee and apoapsis and, you know, excentricity, prograde, retrograde, all that kind of stuff. So uh, at first it can be very confusing and it is really, um, it's, it's easy to, to understand once you kind of know the basic terminology. And then when you're watching other YouTube videos, you can kind of pick up what, uh, what they're talking about and have a good idea of what, what they're doing and how they're getting there. So I just wanted to, you know, throw those common terms out here and, and make a video on it so uh, everyone can be a little bit more educated and hopefully uh, be able to enjoy the game more. And that basically is my goal, just to uh, let people know that even a layperson like myself can understand, uh, maybe not totally understand the concepts, but understand what people are talking about and have a basic idea of what orbital, orbital mechanics are and you know the things that apply to KSP. Some of the mods I have installed are KW Rocketry, B9 Aerospace, and Kerbal Alarm Clock. I also have MechJab, which I'm not going to be using other than uh, just to tell me what the Delta V is on this rocket. So here's a launch, and it's going to be a little bit of an asparagus stage with those boosters down below. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't break while I was hanging out there it started to dangle a little bit but uh, so here's the launch and I'm using the SAS to keep it straight while I'm kind of focusing on a few other things and you'll notice that you know the launch is pretty typical so I get up to about uh, 12,000 meters and then I start making a turn to the east um, I'm about a 45 degrees maybe not that that much um, and I go till I get my apoapsis up to close to 100 kilometers, and then I will um, burn sideways a little bit, uh, almost uh, horizontal. And then I will uh, wait until I coast up to the apoapsis, and then I'll do my orbital burn. Uh, this one I did actually a little bit uh, differently. I, I didn't uh, go horizontal for a while, so it ended up costing me more delta V up in... Uh, when I was doing my uh, apoapsis burn for the orbit. And um, that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, now I'm starting to make my uh, turn over to the east. And you can see uh, I have to fight this a little bit uh, because the prograde vector, which is that uh, yellowish, greenish vector, is, is not kind of following the way I'm going. So I'm still more vertical than uh, starting to go at an angle. As you can see, it starts to move back over to where my center of direction is, or center of thrust. And here's the map screen. And uh, you can see right there I'm hovering over a, a node that says AP. That's the apoapsis. That's the highest point of your orbit. So I want to set up a maneuver node there and burn prograde um, in order to make my orbit. Now I have remote tech installed so I, I once I if I go out of line of sight of the KSP uh, KS command Kerbal Space Command my rocket won't work anymore until it comes back around. Uh, if I don't make an orbit now I will not be able to because I'll lose control and then I'll uh, come into the atmosphere on the back side of the planet because I hadn't made that orbit yet. So I'm just gonna use that blue uh, vector icon to um, set up my uh, my maneuver, my burn, and you can see how long I have to burn approximately, and that's in seconds. That's how much you have to burn at uh, full full power, 
and then you can see in the upper right hand corner that is a, it's a measure of uh, meters per second. So that's my delta V I need to burn uh, in order to make the maneuver happen the way it was out the way it was laid out. Uh, so I jettisoned my last stage there, um, not my last stage, but I jettisoned that uh, planetary stage, and I'm doing my burn now to get the orbit. Uh, I'm going to go for a circular equatorial orbit. Looking at the map once again, you can see our current uh, trajectory is the blue. The planned trajectory is the orange uh, on this one orbit. And you'll see the tags for apoapsis and periapsis. Apoapsis being the highest part of the orbit, periapsis being the lowest part. Also called apogee and perigee. And as you can see here, I'm just pointing pointing that out, uh, what I had just discussed about apogee and perigee. And you saw the nice little effect of the uh, payload shroud breaking off. And right now I'm just putting out my solar panels because if I happen to uh, go out of range of the Kerbal Space Command, I will lose control of the craft. And by the time I get back around, I might not have enough power to extend the solar panels. Uh, and here you can see, so uh, this is actually a, an elliptical, I'm sorry, an equ equatorial orbit. And I'm going to show you how you can, uh, at your periapsis, you can burn prograde to raise your apoapsis. And at apoapsis, you can burn prograde to raise the periapsis to the new apoapsis. Uh, and, you know, there, there's an example of right there. Uh, and this would make an eccentric orbit as opposed to a circular orbit. So you'll hear uh, comments, um, you might hear actually uh, prograde and retrograde orbits. So prograde orbit would be orbiting at the same in the same direction as the primary uh, with Kerbal. With Kerbin it would be um, you know in this view it would be rotating to the right so your prograde orbit would rotate right. Uh, as a retrograde orbit your craft would be going left around the planet. Uh, there are times when that's uh, useful. There's just times where it's just going to happen because of the way you intercept a uh, planetary body or a celestial object and the SOI dictates which way you're going to go because of the, the path you took. So it's something that it's really not important as far as, you know, Kerbal Space Program, but in, in, a, in, a, in a sense when you're landing on planets like Duna or EVE, uh, it's easier to land when you're in prograde, a prograde orbit, and as opposed to a retrograde orbit. Uh, and also, you can use uh, these node uh, directions, prograde, uh, eccentricity, and inclination to change your orbit. And right there, I just used my prograde marker to burn out towards the orbit of the moon, and uh, you get an intercept right at that point, so you can... I could burn uh, using the maneuver node, get out there, and I would come into contact or into the sphere of influence of the moon and be able to do some orbital maneuvers around the moon in order to capture uh, an orbit there. Uh, also, if you keep burning um, prograde, eventually you're going to get to an escape velocity, which um, means that you could, you're actually going to leave the sphere of influence of the planet Right here, I am showing you a maneuver node of an inclination that is not uh, equatorial. Uh, if I keep going and get this thing vertical, uh, we're going to have what we call a polar orbit that goes uh, basically north to south over a, a celestial body. And, you know, that's one of the orbits that are actually, you know, we use them in real life. Uh, with satellites and stuff like that, but uh, for the most part in this game, unless you're doing something specific, you're gonna probably be doing an equatorial orbit. Uh, circular is probably 90% of what you want to do. Uh, there are times where you want an eccentric orbit or an elliptical orbit, and um, you know those you just use them in new notes to do that. Um, the best time to change an inclination. Uh, if you're if you're in a planet, it'd probably be at the uh, major axis or the minor axis. And the major axis is 
in the case of this orbit, the major axis would be the distance between the apoapsis and the periapsis, which would be the longest line that can be drawn through the center of an orbit. Uh, and if we do something like this, that would be, you know, between the apoapsis and the periapsis, that would be the major axis. And then from here or, or here, which, you know, the halfway points on either side is the minor axis. So th at the minor axis would probably be the best times to change your inclination. Uh, it would probably, in this particular orbit, it would cost a lot less fuel to do it there. Um, and if I put, I can put in a maneuver node here, and I can actually do that. And uh, let's see what we got. So if we do it this way, and you can see it's going to change the plane. Uh, so from this kind of northern orbit to this kind of, uh, I guess, sideways orbit. It's kind of tough to see with the maneuver nodes. Uh, I know that in purple too, so it doesn't really help. But uh, those are the best times usually to change your um, inclination. Not always, but for the most part, that's when you want to do it. Uh, also, if, you got, if you're at a celestial object, you say you want to go to the moon, uh, you'll notice that, let me take this out and this one out, you'll notice that you'll have these uh, ascending and descending nodes. Uh, with the moon, it's actually kind of in the same plane, so it's not huge to, to worry about. But uh, there are, oops, oops in here there are times when uh, you might have to change your inclination a little bit in order to keep in the same plane as the target and let me just get back to a okay so here is my um, here is my this is where I'll encounter the moon right around in this area here but the moon is actually pretty much on the same plane as us, and it orbits in the same plane. However, if you go to Minmus, right, which is right here, you can see that its orbit is inclined as opposed to the orbit of the moon and how uh, you're actually, you know, if you have an equatorial orbit around Kerbin, uh, then it, it's it's different. So what, what happens is you get this... Uh, opportunity to change that let me just move this maneuver node around a little bit and, and it's not showing me what I want to see here all right so here we go let's go out a little bit all right so what you can see here is uh, this is what's called the ascending or descending node and you'll notice that this is 7.2. So this ascending node is uh, 7.2 uh, degrees higher than my current orbit. So what I would do here in this instance, um, actually I'd do it at the descending node because I'd hit this first, is I'd add a maneuver here and I'd change my inclination. And I'd actually go down, I believe. Nope, I'm sorry. I'd go up and... By the time I got, and I just had it, what I was doing here is uh, trying to get a encounter with Minmus, but it just, I, I, I would have had to keep moving around the uh, node, so I just decided to give up, but uh, if you have it, you know, when you get an encounter, you'll see that at the ascending node or descending node, you'll have a uh, difference in a degree and you'd want to adjust your inclination uh, to make that closer to zero so that way you'd have more time in the sphere of influence because you'd be entering at that point you made the encounter uh, you'd be closest to the plane instead of either high or low yeah it's you know much better to hit a orbital body or a celestial object at its equator uh, you best chance of getting a orbit with the least amount of uh, fuel is, is is at equatorial orbit. Uh, polar orbits aren't too bad either, but uh, for the sake of ease and efficiency, uh, always try to get an equatorial encounter with, um, uh, you know, a, a planetary object or a moon. 
All right, a few other things you'll probably hear is an orbital period. That's the amount of time it takes t for your craft, rocket, ship, whatever it is, to make one orbit around the, um, the primary, and the primary being whatever you're orbiting, whether it's Kerbin or the moon or Earth or the sun, whatever. Um, your orbital velocity is the orbital speed that your craft will need to maintain an orbit. Uh, so what happens is when you're in an orbit, your craft is always actually falling back towards the surface. Uh, it's in a constant free fall. And the orbital velocity is what makes it happen, uh, what makes the, sh the spacecraft go around fast enough that it's when it's fall, it's falling and it's moving forward at the same speed so that you maintain a, an orbit and you don't just fall back down to the planet. So if you uh, burn retrograde in your orbit and you bring your, uh, arrow, you bring your orbit down low enough where it enters the atmosphere um, on that pass that you come around to meet that uh, node, you're going to probably arrow break and you know fall towards the planet because it'll be it'll lower your speed enough that you'll be you know closer to the planet can get catch the atmosphere or you could you could just drop and so you fall right into the planet so um, when when you hear um, orbital velocity it, that's you just know that you have to go at least that speed in your orbit uh, to get um, an orbit. And then escape velocity would be the speed that you'd need to escape the, the primary's gravity well. So uh, enough speed by burning prograde uh, to escape the planet or the moon or whatever you're at. Uh, and as you escape, this would put you into um, an orbit around the sun so uh, that's basically that's basically orbital maneuvering I mean it's really simplified and uh, you know I tried to keep it brief but those are the basic things that you're gonna need to to know is you know your major semi-major axis minor axis eccentricity inclination prograde and retrograde uh, orbital plane is the plane that you're orbiting the, the celestial body. So if you're an equatorial op, um, equatorial orbit, it's a, your your plane is zero. Uh, and uh, then you got let's see, uh, periapsis and apoapsis, or perigee and apogee. Um, those are really important in this game. Uh, the ascending node, descending node, uh, period, orbital velocity, escape velocity. Um, those are just probably the ones that you're going to use the most. And also the other thing that you'll hear a lot is a, a Hohmann transfer. That's an interplanetary trajectory that uses the least amount of fuel. And uh, it's also known as a gravity assist. What happens is basically you send a craft, uh, when you're doing an interplanetary transfer, you send a craft into a, a solar orbit. Um, and the craft must slow down enough to enter the orbit with the with the targeted primary, uh, but it uses um, gravity and it uses uh, changing your apoapsis and periapsis in order to get uh, a transfer to uh, whatever it is, whatever the target is, at, with using the least amount of fuel as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed what I gave you for information here and maybe it helps you out. Uh, if you like it, subscribe, comment, any suggestions, please let me know. Thank you.